All right, right off the bat, this is a sponsored video. This is a video that um, is of a product that was provided to me for review and evaluation on my channel. But if you guys have watched my channel long enough now, you are probably very aware that even though a product is provided and sponsored, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna get a good review. However, this product right here, if it meets the hype and the claims of people who have reviewed it and already showcased it, especially on Amazon reviews, then it might be something that actually gets a really good thumbs up if, again, it does what they say it's capable of doing. Now, that being said, let's take a moment and talk about what's in front of you because based off the box, you already know there's a heavy duty air compressor inside of here by a company called Go Big, Go Big, Go Big. I don't really know how you pronounce it, but you tell me what you think. Anyways, let's get to the video. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what it's all about. All right, guys. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably seen several small air compressors featured on my channel. The first one that I believe I showcased was a Viair air compressor. It was one that I purchased for the RV. And then I got another one that was mounted in the back of my truck. And then I have a DeWalt one that is, you know, capable of using their 20 volt battery line. And a lot of folks may ask, well, why did you choose to do a review on this specific product? Well, the reason for that is simply because of what they claim this is capable of. That's really it. I didn't really want to do a review on another air compressor, but when they reached out to me and I saw the specs on this specific unit, that's really where it stood out. And if it can actually meet the claims that they say it's capable of meeting, that, that's a lot to be said about an air compressor, especially one that's relatively compact. The actual dimensions are 15.38 inches by 11.42 by 11.42. So let's go ahead and unzip this bag that it comes in. You got your bubble wrap. And this is not a lightweight air compressor. So first of all, got your hose, got your battery connector cables right here. I think this one goes on that end right here, and they just kind of slip on, like that. Throw that back in the box, throw that in the box. All right, so this is our Gobig air compressor. This little information manual is in very, very, very small font. I don't know if I want to read through all of that or not. All right, so let's talk about the physical characteristics of this thing first of all again you got your cable here the cable going to it appears to be looks like maybe 12 or 14 gauge cable it might actually say it somewhere on the cable itself i don't see any indication there it has a rubber hose that comes with it it's probably about a 20 foot rubber hose i surmise you got your valve on one end and then you got your gauge on the other end over here has a little quick release so you can snap it onto the end of your air compressor unit. The side, let's look at the specs on this thing. So this operates on 12 to 13.8 volts, maximum pressure of 150 PSI, amperage 45 amps, airflow 160 liters per minute. So that's pretty high volume airflow for a compact air compressor. I mean, that is, that's significantly greater than you would typically see on a relatively small air compressor. Now keep in mind, this is a lot larger than some of the other ones that you've seen on my channel, like the Viair. The Viair has a smaller footprint overall. You can certainly see the construction of this is pretty dang nice. You got your on off button down here. You have your circuit breaker reset right here. Nice shiny top to the motor housing. Very, very cool. Anyways, what we're gonna do next is get a battery out, hook this thing up and do some tests on it because quite frankly, the ratings don't really matter if it can't accomplish the task that you're trying to accomplish. So I have a pretty cool task for it today. And we're gonna see how it holds up to it. Okay, so we are out here at my Texas Pride dump trailer with this really cool little mini heavy duty air compressor. Very cool. By the way, you pop this off if you wanna get to the air filter. I don't know if it just pops right off if you need to use probably a little screwdriver. Air filters under here. 
one thing else that's a little bit interesting is, is this quick connect or quick release valve right here is I believe like an Australian design because it doesn't work with the uh, the other trucks I have. So again, I believe this is some Australian design, but it's certainly not the standard truck you see on a lot of air compressors here in the States. All right, so we're gonna use this. Maybe this is go beige, go beige. How do you think that's pronounced? And we're gonna try to fill up the uh, the tire here on my dump trailer. Now, you may ask, why is that such a big deal for a compressor like this? Well, the reason being is because this specific tire is actually a 235-75R17.5. And if you're familiar with the .5 at the end, that means this is a commercial spec wheel and tire. These are J load range tires. What does that mean? That means even though these tires might not be big in terms of you know comparison to some off-road tires these can handle upwards of 120 psi which is generally about twice as much as even some of the off-road large tires you see on pickup trucks so the amount of air that you have to actually put inside of this tire is actually pretty challenging for most air compressors and not a lot of them can go up that high even though many claim they can go to 150 psi or they're you know designed for off-road tires you know if you have a jeep and you air your tires down to go through the sand or off-road and then you air them back up typically you're only going to maybe 36 to 55 65 psi max Whenever you're filling up a commercial spec tire like this, sometimes you have to take them all the way up to 120 PSI. Oftentimes you don't have to air them up that high because the actual air pressure in these tires is often dictated by how much load you plan on putting on them. And these tires can certainly handle a tremendous amount of weight. That being said, today we are, uh, we're gonna see how much air is in these tires. I suspect probably around 80, 85 PSI. We're gonna drop them down to about 40, 45 PSI, and we're gonna see if this go beige, go beige, go beige, however you pronounce it, heavy duty compact air compressor is gonna be capable of inflating this tire up to 100 PSI. Now, going to 120 isn't necessarily something I'm looking for. I might try to go above 100 PSI, but we're gonna see if we can at least get these to 100 PSI and approximately how long it takes. So what we wanna do, first of all, is we wanna connect these power cables to the battery of the trailer. You can try to use like a jumper box, but what you'll find out is that these typically don't fill up too quickly. They don't really inflate your tire that quickly, and they're going to be drawing a lot of power from your jumper box. So even though a jumper box may be good enough to fill them up or top them off from, let's say it's at 85 and you want to go to 90 PSI, it'll probably work well there. If you're really wanting to inflate one of these from almost empty or a really low um, PSI to a really high PSI, it's probably gonna kill your battery box. So we're gonna go ahead and avoid that. We're gonna go straight to the battery of this trailer, which has been solar charging, and it should be topped off at 100%. And we're gonna go ahead and see if this can fill this tire from roughly the mid 40s all the way up to over 100 PSI. Okay, so we have the compressor hooked up to the battery terminals on the trailer. Again, it has been solar charging here. We're gonna first of all, probably empty out this front one right here. First of all, we're gonna see exactly how much air is in the tire. Gotta remember I set that there. We're gonna take the chuck off so it's closed. We're gonna come over here, go ahead and screw this on to the end of the valve. We currently have about 80 PSI in here, a little under, maybe 79, 79 and a half PSI in here. So what we're going to do next is drain off or bleed off as much air as we can. Probably put it like that for a little while and see how much air we can go ahead and take out of this tire. Might be a little while, so we'll be right back as soon as we're uh, aired down to an appropriate number. All right, so success. We are down to, uh, I'm going to say probably about 36, 37 PSI. Right around there, maybe a little bit less than that. That's a good starting point to see how this thing performs. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're threaded on all the way here. I don't hear any air coming out of either end of the hose. We're gonna clamp this on right here. 
All right, so we have air going through the line right now. Have it connected. The minute I turn this thing on, we're gonna start a timer and we're gonna see how long it takes to get this tire to 100 PSI. So we're probably not gonna record it the whole time because it might take a while. And ready, set, and... So sound wise, uh, you know, it's about as loud as some of the other compressors I've used. I'd probably say it's not actually as high pitched though. It sounds a lot more kind of lower and muffled, which is nice. Let's see how quickly the gauge is going up. It's actually filling up pretty quickly for what it is. Still got a long way to go though. We're at the halfway mark now. We are, you can see that through the trees, 50 seconds in. Just a hair over 50 PSI. One minute and three seconds in. So it's gone up roughly 12 PSI in a minute. It's about at 55 PSI. Okay, we're gonna let this go for a little while and we'll come back to the timer uh, after a few minutes here. Okay, so as we approach the uh, three minute mark in about, in about five seconds, we are at, okay, 65 PSI. We're just passing the three minute mark. Still climbing. Okay, so we're 20 seconds away, or about 15 seconds away now from the five minute mark. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this on this type of tire is because this is very reminiscent of the type of tire you might see on a heavier duty trailer or a heavier weight RV with a higher load rated tire, or even some of your pickup trucks or semi trucks. Five minute mark, we are at 75 PSI, still climbing. The hose is cool to the touch. Well, it's a little warmer the closer you get to the compressor. The body of that compressor right here is very cool. Yeah, it's, it's hot, it's not scalding, but it is hot. And the cable is warm. We're at five and a half minutes at this point. But yeah, there are certainly some RVs, like our RV, which has tires that can go up to 120 PSI. There are even G-rated tires. You don't have to go all the way up to J-rated, but G-rated tires that also have that higher PSI rating. Commercial truck tires, like what comes on my truck, even though you don't want to typically go that high, um, they can support that much pressure. So, you know, being able to have a compressor with you that can fill up one of those heavier duty tires is certainly important. A lot of folks get these things for Jeeps and off-road vehicles that only have to go to 36 or 80 PSI, but really when you wanna go much higher than that is a true test on if one of these is gonna hold up. So we're still going, not quite at 100, and we're at the six minute and 20 second mark. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we are just crossing 10 minutes and we are at about 93 PSI, almost 95. Again, we're gonna stop at 100, and uh, we're gonna see specifically how long it took to get to 100 PSI from 37. This is not an easy task for an air compressor. And you know, even when I use my Viair, my other air compressor, even my onboard air compressor, typically I'll have the tank filled up to 175 PSI. So whenever I hook it up to the tire, I have all that pressure in the tank that can essentially force its way in, and the air compressor is only there to recharge the tank until the tank goes empty, of course, then it's going straight off the air compressor. But this is pretty cool to see a, a solution like this, which is roughly half the cost of some of the higher priced air compressors, you know, able to perform the way it is. Again, this takes a lot of time, only if you're not used to using these smaller air compressors, even the super high-end ones that you've heard of, you know, you know, on the channel before and other channels, it's very, very rare that any of these can fill up a tire super fast. Okay, we're at 11 minutes and 10 seconds. We are at about 95 PSI. 
of course it's going to get harder and harder and harder for the air compressor the higher we go and it's going to go slower as well because now you're having to force enough air through this hose to be able to counteract the air being forced out of the tire into the hose so right now we have 95 pounds pushing against the hose and then we have to have enough air pressure coming into the hose to be able to counterbalance that to fill the tire up and that's one of the reasons why we're going to 100 psi even if this can put out 150 psi you have to remember it's only really going to be able to push about 50 psi in considering we have about 100 psi pushing against it right now we're standing back a little bit just because this is a lot of air pressure in a tire and heaven forbid the tire burst we want to be a good safe distance away from it getting closer i imagine probably doing a number on my battery right now okay so we are approaching the 12 and a half minute mark and we are just about to hit 100 psi we're probably at about 97 97 and a half psi we're gonna stop it at the 13 minute mark we'll see how hot this is to the touch that is and then we'll uh We'll kind of wrap this video up and see what our final impressions are. Okay, so we got about five seconds starting now. Four, three, two, one. Compressor's off. Coming over here, we are right at 100 PSI. That's pretty cool. So 13 minutes to fill this tire from 37 to 100 PSI. Now again, this is not a commercial floor mounted unit that you would see in a tire shop. This is a tiny little handheld air compressor that draws off of your battery. So I want you to kind of put that into perspective. And again, just because you see this time doesn't mean that any other compact air compressor can do this. This is a very difficult task to accomplish, especially getting it all the way up to 100 PSI. So I'd have to give this thing a thumbs up. It, uh, it's performing well. I'm not hearing any leaks or any back pressure forcing air out of the compressor itself. You know, this is pretty cool. It works, it fills it up, it's gonna take a bit and uh, you're gonna have to have a bit of patience while you're waiting for your tire to fill up. But if you're just topping off your RV tires, if let's say, you know, it's been in storage and you typically keep 85 PSI in there and it's dropped down to 75, just to add that extra 10 pounds per tire might take a little while, might take two or three minutes per tire, but this can certainly handle the task. And because I know a lot of folks are gonna expect me to go ahead and top off the rest of the tires now that I have this one at 100 PSI, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. They were all, all roughly in that mid 70 to uh, right under 80 PSI range. And we're just gonna top the rest of them off as well. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll put a link in the description of this video if this is a product you may be interested in. And I will give you my feedback over time on how it's performing and how it lasts and any other projects I use it on. Guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.